from our uh, discussion of the uh, security kernel, the uh, trusted computing platform, the, uh, uh, the reference monitor, and, and so forth, uh, we turn rather naturally to uh, another couple of related concepts, which is the um, well, the, the Bastion model of, of security, which I've raised before, and the issue of the security perimeter. Now, um, we will come to uh, the term Bastion again in terms of uh, a Bastion host uh, when we get into telecommunications and networking, because when you have a... Uh, a network situation uh, when you're talking about subnetworking, um, when you are uh, discussing any kind of a, a firewall or well, actually any kind of gateway, um, you want to harden that machine. Um, and uh, in contradiction to the usual case of a bastion in a fortress um, where you harden it by adding things to it, thicker walls, heavier gates, and so on. Uh, in terms of technology, when you're hardening a host, you are basically doing it by taking stuff away. You want to remove any functions uh, from that machine that are not essential to its specific core function. Um, you want to uh, ensure that there is the smallest possible attack surface. Um, you want to uh, make sure that the, uh, the system that's being used as a gateway has uh, the least functions that can be poked and prodded and become uh, vulnerabilities and uh, exploited become access points and therefore your your gateway machine becomes an attack point. However, uh, that's, uh, as I say, in the future we're looking now at in terms of the Bastion model and the Bastion model, we, um, as I say, you know, this is a bit problematic these days. It tends to be highly regarded in security literature because an awful lot of people learned security under the the bastion model um we are the good guys on the inside the bad guys are all on the outside all we have to do is make sure that nobody from the outside uh gets into the inside and we're safe uh, we are secure um and there's uh, a number of issues there when we get into application development. As I say, I, you know, uh, started out in uh, researching computer viruses. When you come from that background, uh, you know that, uh, you know, sometimes the bad guys get in in some very interesting ways. And uh, so the, the Bastion model um, is not only not a good fit, but uh, can be misleading and so I you know I, I would say you know do not live by the Bastion model you if you live by the Bastion model these days you're probably going to die by the Bastion model so um, the uh, the thing is that associated with the Bastion model is an important consideration but one which is becoming increasingly problematic and that is the uh, security perimeter and uh, you know in, in you know in the old days the security perimeter was just whatever is connected to your machine uh, you have the central computer you have your terminals you have some peripherals and that's it then along came networking well you know now do we extend the security perimeter to the other computers that are connected to our computer and uh, as is increasingly the case, the network now is the computer. So how far do we extend our security perimeter? And these days, when we have everything connected, and not just uh, in terms of the interconnection of our, our systems and the, 
wide range of devices that people may use. Uh, desktop computers, laptop computers, uh, back-end mainframes and mini computers and servers and server banks and uh, the cloud and uh, so forth. But, you know, increasingly phones and watches and uh, all kinds of peripheral devices that people are using to connect themselves to our systems. And, uh, you know, we, we are working in that kind of environment. So where is the security perimeter these days? And, and you've, uh, you know, the, the concept is still important. It's not that the concept is not important. The concept is important, increasingly important, to make that distinction. When are you signed on to our network? When are you signed on um, when you are always connected with a cell phone, uh, say, that has a, a data service, um, you are always connected to the internet and you are connecting to the enterprise network through the internet. So, you know, ensuring that we identify, yes, this is the right person, yes, this is the right node, yes, this is a device which we, we may have uh, secured or hardened to have access to uh, to our network, uh, to our back-end systems, uh, to our uh, software as a service, whatever kind of utilities that we have made available to our employees for the purposes of our enterprise, um, you know, uh, ensuring that it's, it, you know, it is in fact our employees who have access to it, or our customers, our uh, clients, our contractors, our vendors, um, who may have a need for partial access and, and making sure that we have, you know, the appropriate levels of access uh, to give to these people. So, uh, again, the, the concept is, is still important. It's just that it's getting harder to define and more difficult to understand uh, what exactly is our security perimeter. Uh, but still important to make that definition. Now, um, this then, uh, you know, we've got a couple of uh, problematic concepts um, and we're now leading into yet another one which is gonna be uh, fairly complex here and uh, yet tied much more closely to our idea of uh, architecture, and that is memory. And so uh, we will be starting into memory and what is memory and how we use memory and, and uh, which parts of memory we, uh, we manage in which way.